بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم الیہ ورد علم الساعة وما تخرج من ثمرات من اکمامها وما تحمل من انثا ولا تدع الا بعلمه ويوم يناديهم أين شركائي قالوا آذناك ما منا من شهيد Quran nightly This is a summary of the 25th Juz of the Holy Quran in which there are 20 sections The first section Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about Qiyama, the Sa'a makes it known that it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has the exact knowledge of it. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denounces the ungrateful attitude of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, With him alone is the knowledge of the hour. No fruit comes out of its husk, nor does a female conceive or deliver without his knowledge. And consider the day he will call to them, Where are my so-called associate gods? They will exclaim, We declare before you that none of us testifies to that any longer. And whatever idols they used to invoke besides God, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will fail them. And they will realize that they will have no escape. لا يسأم الإنسان من دعاء الخير وإن مسه شر فيأوس قنوط. One never tires of praying for good, and if evil is touches him, if touched with evil, they become desperate and hopeless. And if we taste them a mercy from us. After being touched with adversity, they will certainly say, This is what I deserve. I do not think the hour will ever come. And if fa in fact I am returned to my Lord, the finest reward with him will definitely be mine. But we will surely inform the disbelievers of what they used to do, and we will surely make them taste a harsh torment. This reality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions, and in the next surah, which is Surah Ashura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the beginning of that mentions the great divineness uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the invocation of angels in favor of the believers as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْ فَوْقِهِنَّ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَلَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, The heavens nearly burst, one above the other, in awe of him. And the angels glorify the praises of their Lord and seek forgiveness for those on earth. Surely Allah alone is all forgiving, all merciful. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهُ حَفِيظٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِوَكِيلٌ As for those who take partners besides him, Allah is watchful over them, and you, O Prophet wasallam, are not a keeper over them. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the third section Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again saying about his divine power always surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divine power the Quran's similarity in matters of belief to previous revelations and despite this some have still deviated from the truth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, 
ومختلفتم فيه من شيء فحكمه إلى الله ذلكم الله ربي عليه توكلت وإليه أنيب فاطر السماوات والأرض جعل لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا ومن الأنعام أزواجا يذرأكم فيه ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير Say to the believers O Prophet whatever you may differ about its judgment rests with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is Allah my Lord in him I put my trust and to him I always return he is the originator of the heavens and the earth he has made you for you spouses from among yourselves and made mates for cattle as well multiplying you both there is nothing like him and he alone is all hearing all seeing lahu maqalid as-samawati wal ard yabsut ar-rizq liman yasha wa yaqdir innahu bi kulli shay'in alim he to him belong the keys allah akbar of the treasures of the heavens and the earth he gives abundant or unlimited or limited provisions and he sometimes he opens them up expands them and at other times he restricts them he gives abundant or limited uh provisions to whom soever he wills so this bust and qadr is up to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed he has the perfect knowledge of all things in the fourth section allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a call to do good while reminding of the consequences according to intentions a clarification of the integrity of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the door f- to forgiveness and hope is always open and this w- is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distributes provisions differently and this is something that uh people sometimes fail to realize that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arzaq allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who takes care of all of that and we must always keep in mind that we take the means and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test us he gives us more and sometimes he takes away walaw basata Allahu ar-rizqa li'ibadi labaghaw fi al-ard walakin yunazzilu biqadr ma yasha innahu bi'ibadihi khabirun basir had Allah given abundant provisions to all all his servants everybody's made filthy rich <laughs> they would certainly have transgressed throughout the lands allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows but he sends down whatever he wills in perfect measure he is truly all aware all seeing of his servants wa huwa alladhi yunazzilu al-ghaith min ba'di ma qanatu wa yanshuru rahmatah wa huwa al-waliyyu al-hamid he is the one who sends down rain after people have given up hope spreading out his mercy he is the guardian he is the praiseworthy and in the fifth in the fifth ruku allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives reason for calamities and difficulties of mankind <coughs> allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> he says wama asabakum min musibah fa bima kasabat aydikum wa ya'fu an kathir whatever affliction befalls you is because of your own hands as what your own hands have committed and he pardons much allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> you know forgives us gives us a lot of delay in punishing us you know if he were to punish us right away what would we do but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardons much and whatever conditions you see they are because of what your hands have earned and therefore we should always strive to do good and stay away from evil and malevolence in the sixth ruku there is a situation of the disbelievers at the moment of seeing the punishment reminder of the prophetic mission some blessings and absolute and undivided divine power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَن يُضْلِلِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَتَرَى الظَّالِمِينَ لَمَّا رَأَوُا الْعَذَابَ يَقُولُونَ هَلْ إِلَى مَرَدٍّ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ 
وتراهم يعرضون عليها خاشعين من الذل ينظرون من طرف خفي and whoever Allah leaves to stray will have no guide after him you will see the wrongdoers when they face the torment pleading is there any way back to the world and you will see those them exposed to the fire fully humbled now out of disgrace stealing glances at it you know and the believers will say the true lure losers are those who have lost themselves and their families on, judge, on judgment day وقال الذين امنوا ان الخاسرين الذين خسروا انفسهم واهليهم يوم القيامه الا ان الظالمين في عذاب مقيم the wrong doers will certainly be in everlasting torment may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that in the next surah surah zukhruf allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a description of the quran and some divine attributes and there is in the eighth ruku a disavowal of some erroneous beliefs and a response to some objections allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says am ittakhadha mimma yakhluqu banat wa asfakum bil banin wa idha bushira ahaduhum bima daraba lir rahman mathala adalla wajhuhu muswaddan wa huwa kadhim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says has he taken angels as his daughters that some of them attributed daughters to the angels as daughters to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la ya'udhu billah from what he created and favored you o pagans with sons <laughs> and they and themselves don't even do that and they favor sons subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about this absurdity whenever one of them is given the good news of what they dis- attribute to who the most compassionate to rahman his face glooms his face becomes gloomy and dark as he suppresses his rage so this bad attitude do they attribute to him those who are brought up in these types of arguments and are they not commanding in disputes and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says wa ja'alu al malaikata alladhina hum ibadur rahman inatha ashahidu khalqahum satuktabu shahadatuhum shahadatuhum wa yus'alun still they have labeled the angels who are servants of the most compassionate as female what do they even know that did they witness their creation their statement will be recorded and they will be questioned and similarly in the ninth uh, section allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions the da'wa of ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam answer to the objection of the quraysh of the choice of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as the messenger and a reminder of those of the wisdom and the distribution of the provision and the capacities among people and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says ahum yaqsimuna rahmata rabbik nahnu qasamna baynahum ma'ishatuhum fil hayati ad-dunya wa rafa'na ba'dahum fawqa ba'din darajat liyattakhidha ba'dhum ba'dan sukhriya wa rahmatu rabbika khayrun mimma yajma'un is it they who divide and distribute your lord's mercy we alone have distributed their very livelihood among them in this worldly life and raised some of them in rank over others so that they may employ others in service but your lord's mercy is far better than whatever wealth they amass and this is the ideal way for economies to flourish uh, where each does their part and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who distributes the livelihood and makes some employ others in service 
And this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a beautiful way for communities to help one another. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 10th ruku gives a warning to man not to be fooled by shaitan at the risk of regretting it later on and instead clinging on to uh, the revelation which is the most important thing. وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ Allah forbid and save us from that. And whoever turns a blind eye to the reminder of the most compassionate, we place at the disposal of each a devilish one, a shaitan, as their close associate. And what do they do then? Who will certainly hinder them from the right way while they think they are rightly guided? May Allah save us from that. Hatta idha ja'ana قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكَ بُعْدَ الْمَشْرِقَيْنِ فَبِئْسَ الْقَرِينَ But when such a person comes back to us, one will say to their associate, this shaitan, I wish you were as distant from me as the east is from the west. What an evil associate you were. And we come to then the 11th ruku in which there is an illustration through a period from the life of Musa alayhi salam and again the pride of the pharaoh in the 12th ruku a response to an objection from the Quraysh on Prophet Isa alayhi salatu was salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that aspect he says وَلَمَّا ضُرِبَ بْنُ Maryam Mathala Ida Kaumuka Minhu Yasidun Wakalu Ali Hatuna Khairun Amhu Madarabu Hulaka Illa Jadala Balhum Kaumun Hasimun. When the son of Mary was cited as an example in argument, your people, O Prophet broke into joyful applause. They exclaimed, Which is better? Our gods or Isa alayhi salam? They cite him only to argue. In fact, they are people prone to dispute. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the final ruku and section of this surah, this is the 13th ruku of this juz, gives a description on the scene of qiyamah where the believers will be assured and led with their wives to Jannah, while the deniers will be thrown into the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أُدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ أَنْتُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ تُحْبَرُونَ يُطَعْفُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِسِحَافٍ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ وَأَكْوَابٍ وَفِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِ الْأَنْفُسِ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنِ وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Enter into this beautiful paradise, you and your spouses rejoicing. Golden trays and cups will be passed around to them. There will be whatever the soul desires. SubhanAllah. And the eyes, and whatever the eyes delight in. And you will be there forever. وَتِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي أُورِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ that is the paradise which you will be awarded, rewarded for what you used to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all among those who inherit Jannah. Ameen. And we come to Surah Dukhan, which is the 14th ruku. Uh, a presentation of the Quran here is given, which was revealed from the preserved tablet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Kaaba of the angels of the first sky. Baytul Izzah and during the blessed night of Al Qadr of Laylatul Qadr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this Quran in this blessed month of Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah inna kunna munzirin fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim on that night every matter of wisdom 
has ordained amram min indina inna kunna mursilin and this is by a command from us for we have always sent messengers and warners rahmatan mir rabbik this is a mercy from your lord that we are guided and innahu huwa samiun alim but the important thing is we have to be truly acceptable to that and knowledgeable of it he alone is truly all hearing and all seeing <clears throat> and in the 15th ruku allah gives a reminder of the divine blessings towards bani israil uh, in the 16th ruku there's a description of the punishment of the hellfire and the delights in jannah in the last surah of this juz we come to surah al-jathiyah in the beginning which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his divine power and warnings to those who remain insensitive to the hearing of the verses out of arrogance the verses of the Quran and laugh at the verses of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says yasma'u ayatillah tutla alayh thumma yusirru mustakbiran ka'an lam yasma'ha they hear Allah's revelations recited to them, then persist in denial arrogantly, as if they did not hear them. So give them good news of a painful punishment. And whenever they learn anything of our revelation, they make a mockery out of it. It is they who will suffer a very humiliating punishment. Just like they used to mock and humiliate the messengers, the Quran and the du'at. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a befitting punishment of humiliation. And in the 18th ruku, there's a mention of the manifestation of the benefits in order to awaken awareness of the divineness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and develop gratitude <clears throat> in the 19th ruku wisdom of the creations of the heavens and the earth a denunciation of those who take their desires as divinity billah, and this is exactly what many people do today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says afara'ayta man ittakhadha ilahahu hawa فَأَدَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصِرِهِ غِشَاوَةً فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Have you seen, O Prophet, those who have taken their own desires as their God? And this is what is uh, being practiced today in all the different types of mentalities and ideologies, uh, especially coming from people who are so-called liberals uh, and those people who are only looking for their own rights <laughs> when it comes to that at the end of the day it's all about their desires uh, all these different types of isms that have developed in the world have destroyed humanity from the realization of the one creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence this is what it ends up in uh, to this point where uh, you know, dystopia takes place and ruin, utmost chaos, you know, animosity, all of these things, hostilities take place, violence takes place. This is the cause of that, that they have taken their own desires and made them, and they desire, these desires have been turned into their own ilah. They worship their own selves. Uh, to the point where <clears throat> even now people are saying it will lead humanity to just finishing off all of humans altogether. Uh, this is the kind of world uh, that these people picture. At the end, it's just about fulfilling the desires. And what's going to be left? It's like everything's going to be to fulfill desires. And only the brain of a human being will be left. And everything will be else will be a uh, perfect world that they envision as all fulfillment of desires just you know that's it and subhanallah 
This is what uh, human race has come become. May Allah save us from that type of fitna. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left them to stray knowingly, uh, sealed their hearing and hearts. You know, Allah sealed their hearing and hearts because they themselves chose that. And so some people don't understand what Allah is saying. Well, look, he's already sealed their hearts, so they, they're they uh, forced to do it. No, they chose to do that. So Allah, whatever they choose, Allah then, he does accordingly and placed a cover on their sight. Who can guide them after Allah? Will you all not then be mindful? May Allah guide us. And then finally, in the 20th Ruku, a manifestation of the divine power, fate of different people on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَتَرَى كُلَّ أُمَّةٍ جَاثِيَةٍ كل أمة تدعى إلى كتابها اليوم تجزون بما ما كنتم تعملون اليوم تجزون ما كنتم تعملون and you will see every faith community on its knees on its knees every community will be summoned to its record of deeds they all will be told this day you will be award, rewarded for what you used to do هذا كتابنا ينطق عليكم بالحق and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, This record of ours speaks the truth about you indeed. We always had your deeds recorded by the angels. And فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَيُدْخِلُهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ فِي رَحْمَتِي أَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْمُبِينَ As for those who are were believed and did good, their Lord will admit them into his mercy this is truly the greatest and absolute triumph and as for those who disbelieved they will be told were my revelations not recited to you yet you acted arrogantly and were a wicked people may allah save us and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow us with jannah and give us a tawfiq to become righteous servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallahil azim